The annual Hopkinton High School Science and Engineering Fair took place and many projects were on display. We found a organism called slime mold that's basically really good at designing optimal pathways. It has been proven to like, like for example, the uh, interstates, like it designed those by itself, which took other designers like over 50 years to do. So we, so basically our question was, could it do it for Hoggington on a smaller scale? And the result is not exactly, but it can still help a lot in the road design process. So if you look here, that's our modified version, and that's like the old version, and here's the slime mold like version of it that we three printed out, and uh, yeah. So you may notice that this, this is the old road. It took twice as long for from here to go to either of these roads. So basically, the problem was traffic was jamming there. So. Slime mold didn't design the best path. However, we did notice where it was jamming, right there, it also uh, kind of like cluttered up. It got, it's like a thicker yellow dot than uh, around the rest. So we concluded that while it can't exactly design awful pathways by itself, it can actually help and find like flaws, like where traffic would jam on uh, roads before they're developed. The judges chose 15 finalists to head to the regional tournament at Worcester Polytechnic Institute. So our project was about developing a genetically identical cell line or a protocol for a genetically identical cell line specific to Huntington's disease, which is a fatal uh, and debilitating neurodegenerative disorder that affects approximately one in 10,000 people. And our goal was to develop it uh, in a manner that produces a genetically identical cell line so that we could expedite the research process for investigators and hopefully establish a basis for therapies and cures in the future, given that there are no uh, permanent therapies or cures available for the disease right now. Now. Ultimately, we uh, verified our uh, cell line's uh, success uh, with many quantitative tests such as qPCR and PCR, uh, finding that we indeed did uh, do genetic, perform genetic alterations on the uh, cell lines, and then we later applied the cell lines in our own applications tests to see if the fidelity we were trying to achieve with these genetically similar cells uh, was achieved, and we did, uh, seeing uh, uh, result, good results across the board. Um, this is probably the culmination about a year, year and a half's worth of work. This is a continuation from our science fair project last year, and we are continuing the research. Well, not really sure when we're going to stop, but uh, we're continuing it for now. And, and you guys are uh, you're going to the science fair, correct? The regional science fair, yep. Terrific. How did it feel to be one of the winners today? Um, we felt really, we felt, we felt really, I felt really good. What did you? Yeah, it always feels good to move on to the next uh, level of competition, so, uh, We'll be well, happy congratulations, there. guys. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, my project is titled The Patient-Specific Delivery of Proton Beam Radiation. So uh, many people get tumors in, in America. They're estimated to be about 700,000 people with tumors in America. And around 90,000 are expected to be diagnosed this year. And um, these tumors in the head and neck area are really difficult to treat using conventional forms of radiation. That's why doctors use this special type of radiation called proton beam radiation. Uh, what's nice about proton beam radiation is that it loses most of its energy in a really, really small location in space called the Bragg peak. So if we can position the Bragg peak inside the tumor, then we're good and we damage the tumor less than the surrounding healthy tissue. But that begs the question, which angle should, I, should the doctors uh, administer the radiation at so that the least amount of healthy tissue is damaged, right? You want as little collateral damage as possible while doing proton beam radiation. So my, pro, my, uh, my project attempts to solve exactly this problem, to try to find the best angle to administer proton beam radiation so that we damage the least amount of healthy tissue. So now, in this, I've taken into account the energy loss in each piece of tissue and also the relative importance of each tissue and I've designed a way to calculate the damage that is done to healthy tissue. And then what I do is I have my program take in an image of a patient. At, at the moment, it supports four, uh, four different types of tissues. Um, it takes in their weightages. It takes in an image. And then it spits out which angle the radiation 
should come out at so, so as to minimize the damage to the healthy tissue. And how long did it take you to do your project? Right, so I've been working on this project since, uh, well, around November it's where I started emailing people from Mass General Hospital to see if I could get some information. How did it feel to be one of the winners today? <laughs> it feels pretty good, I guess. I mean, yeah. Yeah, so what an exciting day. This was definitely one of the largest fairs in school history. We had 41 projects, um, I think over 85 students represented of 9th through 12th graders. So such an exciting day and so wonderful to have this much enthusiasm in the town for science and engineering. Terrific. And uh, can you tell us about your thoughts on some of the projects? Uh, it's like some amazing work that is yeah. far beyond the uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's always so much fun to see what high school students are interested in exploring and it's always really inspiring to me to see how many of them take on problems that affect their families, their neighborhood, their communities and really want to make a difference. Um, so many of these ideas are so bold and ambitious and it makes me really hopeful for the future that this generation is going to solve a lot of our problems and make the world better and as corny as that sounds, I think there's there's nothing better as a teacher than seeing students take what they've learned in all their classes K-12 through and apply it to solving a really important problem. So. Those are the most fun types of projects to see. Yeah, so we're really excited. We will send 15 projects on to WPI to compete at the regional fair. That's in mid-March. And then um, the top 30 projects from there will go on to the state fair and maybe a handful on to the international fair. So really, it's just kind of getting started now. Um, so lots of projects here that are, are have an option for the next steps. And we're really excited for the next few weeks all together.